slide layers in Storyline allow you all sorts of flexibility to build out your slides so that you can show different content on your slides at different points. Like in this example, if I mouse over each of these characters, see how there's some additional information that's showing up near the bottom of my slide? Well, that information is coming from slide layers that I've created on this slide. And then I use the trigger to tell Storyline when I want those layers to appear. We're going to cover triggers in another tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to give you a look at how to create and edit layers on your slides. So we're going to switch over to Storyline, and I've got a slide right here where I've created some content. What I want to do is cause a layer to appear, you know, when the learner mouses over each of these characters, just like we saw in the example. So for that to happen, we need to create the layers. And we do that down here in the lower right, which is the Slide Layers pane. We can do it one of two ways. We can click on this new layer icon, or we can come up here to the Insert tab and click on Slide Layer. That's going to add a new layer right on top of our base layer. It's going to be called Untitled at first, but it's always a good idea to name your layers. That's going to make it a little easier to work with them, especially if you've got you know, really sophisticated interaction where you've got lots of different layers. So let's call this first one Monica. And then we'll add another layer and call that one Roland. And those are the layers that are going to display that additional content that we want the learner to see. So I'm going to go ahead and add my content, if you excuse me for just a moment. OK, so I've added a shape here and some text to each of my slide layers, as you can see. You should know, though, that you can add just about any kind of content to your layers that you want. Like up here in the Insert tab, you can add all sorts of things, videos, text, shapes, characters. Um, you can really go wild there if you want. I've got a pretty simple situation here. OK, so when you're working with layers, you'll want to be able to control how the layer behaves. And we do that by customizing the layer properties. Layers can have properties just like the base layer of your slide does. And to adjust those properties, you can click on this little gear icon right down here on the layer. And here's what you'll see. You'll have uh, some visibility options up here. You can cause um, other slide layers to be invisible when this layer appears. You can also cause the base layer to be invisible when this layer appears. I do want to mention, though, that if you want to have only some of your base layer objects become invisible, but not all of them when this layer appears, you can do that too. And I'll show you how to do it in a second. If that's your choice, you would want to leave this checkbox unmarked. The last checkbox here allows you to close the layer as soon as its timeline finishes, which is to say as soon as everything on the slide finishes playing out, like any audio or animations, things like that. Let's talk about this Allow Seeking. This is an option that if you have a seek bar enabled on your player controls for this slide, you can make the seek bar active for that layer if you want to. And this is nice if you've got maybe some video or animations or audio on your layer that you want your learners to be able to pause or rewind or scrub through. So you can let Storyline decide this for you, or you can say, yes, I definitely want my seek bar to work when the layer displays, or no, I definitely do not. You also have a few options here under base layer. You can keep the learner from clicking on the base layer if you want, and you can cause the base layer's timeline to pause. This means that if the base layer's timeline hasn't finished playing all the way out when the layer appears, then that base layer will pause. And then when the uh, layer closes, the base layer will pick up where it left off. OK, the revisit option is also something to be aware of. If you set up a slide where learners will possibly view the same layer multiple times, you'll probably want to take a look at this. It's going to default to automatically decide. And here's the logic with that. If the layer has just plain objects or audio but nothing interactive, then Storyline is going to reset the layer to the beginning of the layer's timeline each time the learner views it. But if the layer has any interactive elements, like buttons or really anything that has a visited or selected state on it, then Storyline will resume the timeline where the learner left off if they come back again. So like if your layer has maybe a button with a selected state and the learner marks that button, when they come back to this layer, that button is still going to be selected. And then these resume or reset options, they just allow you to make the choice of whether that initial state of the layer gets reset or saved. OK, so coming back to that tip about um, if you want to hide only some of your base layer objects when this layer appears, here's how you can do that. On the slide layer, you can come down here and open up your timeline. And what you'll see is a line here that says Base Layer Objects. If you click the triangle, that's going to allow you to expand and view all the items on your base layer. So if there's some stuff that you don't want to appear, you can hide it. Like maybe on this whiteboard, I wanted you know some other text to appear when the layer shows up. I can turn off the text from my base layer. So those are some basics on slide layers. Check out the written tutorial for a few more tips and we'll see you in the forums.